Hey guys, still here and welcome to another adventure series for From the Depths. In this one, as you might have gathered from the title, I am building a submarine. Why a submarine? Well, because submarines are awesome. You can get all sorts of nice weapon systems on them. They benefit a lot from torpedoes. And depending on how lucky slash unlucky you get, you can actually get pretty survivable craft. And... Again, you need to get lucky, but uh, if you do, then you can get underwater and make yourself very, very difficult to hit before anything shows up. Ideally. Ideally. Now I'm going to set up an eco max here just to quickly start harvesting resources, because once you have an engine, an engine power, this is going to go substantially faster. And I'm going to start building out my first bit on the sub. First thing you're going to see is a box. The reason for that is that the submarine uh, just needs a bit of buoyancy. As ironic as that sounds, because for now, I want to stay on the surface. Crap. That was bound to happen, wasn't it? I need a bit of buoyancy to ensure that I can start harvesting these resources. Time is very, very precious. Especially early on in adventure mode. Because... It's it's not quite an inverse difficulty curve in the sense that it gets easier the longer you play. But once you get past this first hitch, it does become easier. Come on, I just need enough resources to build an airtight box. That's the key here. Oh, crap. Stay on the surface. Come on. Yeah, that will do. Make it a box. Make it airtight. Uh, water, air pump. I know it's not airtight yet, but now I can still reasonably see it. Oh, never mind. We have... Is it working? Yeah, it is not breached. Uh, <laughs> really? It looks, it looks fairly breached to me. But okay, if you're saying it's not breached, it's not breached. I'm not going to argue with the game. Right. Um, I'm going to expand this. This is going to be an area that's going to be easily floodable. I can, of course, also flood my control room, and I will, because the robot, the controller, or the, the, well, the player-controlled character, if you will, doesn't need any air, which makes your life infinitely easier. Uh, these are 40, no, 20 each. Okay, one, two, three. I need a few more. Just trying to build out the general structure of the sub for now. And also trying to get a few more compartments so that I can start pumping air into them and get more buoyancy. Because, of course, metal is fairly heavy. Now, I can assure you there is a method to the madness that you are currently watching, and all shall be revealed, provided that I can make it f past the first 20 minutes or so, because that's usually when you get killed, or at least that's how it works for me. Air pump, click. Okay, we have a nice box. It floats, it's harvesting resources, and for now, that is all that it needs to do. It just needs to harvest resources. All right, um, as it's harvesting resources, I'm going to start working on the general layout of the sub. I'm gonna go for two meter angles here. Uh, let's start with a triangle corner. I will make these wedges, by the way. Oh crap, mirror mode. I will make those wedges to ensure a bit more hydrodynamics. Uh, press R. When you're hovering over a block that you want to copy, press R. I don't generally do this enough, but for this series I'm going to try and make it a habit. And a couple of slopes. 
Now, I am by no means an expert in designing subs. Um, I've practiced quite a bit with them, and I think that I can make them work most of the time. But it is really going to come down to how long do you survive in the first couple of minutes of the game. Because if you get killed here, it's very hard to come back from it. Not impossible, but sure as hell not easy. Anyway, you're looking at the stern of the sub at the moment. Um, do you, no, actually... No, I don't need those. Remove. Uh, give me a 2 meter slope. Give me a couple of... Actually, we're going to start with 4s, 4 meter beams. Fill in everything that's not capable of getting filled in with uh, the 4s. 2 meter beam there, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And I've now figured out that I haven't quite built this thing as... Let's say as deep as I would like it. Uh, up we go. That one. As for propulsion, by the way, you have a lot of options for a submarine. You can go for the... Mm, dare I say classic of uh, RTGs. And it's definitely going to serve you well, but it is expensive. If you're looking for something that's a bit faster, you're going to come to fuel engines or steam engines. At least that has been my experience. And I'm going to use steam. I know that there is something to be said for using RTGs. And I might transition to those later. But for now, steam is where it's at for me. Click, click, click. Get the beams in. We're looking at a decent amount of resources, but I am not anywhere near where I want to be. Uh, let's see, this is that compartment. Remove those beams, yes. I can now also remove those intermittent sections. Hold on, something's not right here. You, you're not where you should be. All right, means that I can cut out some of these intermittent things that I use to create buoyancy. I might come to regret that for now as I won't have any buoyancy, meaning I don't gather any resources. So if I close these things back up, hopefully I'll get buoyancy. Come on, float, will ya? get back up to the surface. We are burning daylight here. And I wish I was kidding, but this is a critical time to gather resources. Come on. Unless I'm mistaking, nothing is leaking here. I might be mistaken. Uh, give me a wooden beam. Just a simple four meter wooden beam. We're going to manually just Pull these things out of the water. Here we go. Resource gatherer. Quickly now. There. We need those resources. And we need them quickly. Click, click, click. Get rid of those. We are listing over. Give me a lead keel. Center of mass is all over the place, probably. That's causing all sorts of problems. Am I leaking anywhere? Not to my knowledge. And I'm gathering resources. Perfect. How much? There's another five and a half thousand in here. Okay. Now the good news is um, the submarine is already submerged. The bad news is I have no way to control it. So that's something that we need to start working on. Control over the submarine. Because without that, well, you just have a floating coffin. Not even that, actually, because I'm not even inside said coffin. So that's the stern. Um, let's go for steam. So I'm going to need a steam engine. I'm going to use a steam controller. And this is not a tutorial on how to use these things, by the way. Let me put that up front. What I'm going to do is build a small turbine. So I'm going to use a uh, turbine steam connection and then a small mid-section 
Oh crap, that's the pipe connection over there. Midsection. Uh, generator section and then a turbine. There we go, it's generating power now. And yes, this does come at the expense of some resources. It's not great, it's not ideal, but for now it works. Uh, where is that battery here? And that means that this electric engine is working. Excellent. Okay, that also means that I can tear off this uh, petrol engine, which I wouldn't be surprised if it already drowned. There you go. Speaking of, I think something's not right. Because I should be floating on the surface, but I'm not. Did I remove an air pump accidentally? Water, air pump. Yes, I did. And now I'm once again going upside down. All right, we're gonna have to add a keel. Normally, I don't have to do it this early on, but for now, fine. Yeah, go on, keep turning. Right the ship. Go on. Sooner is better. Gather resources. Yep, there we go. Perfect. All right, so the stern needs a propulsion section. In order to do that, steam engine, small crank engine. This thing transfers electrical power into actual output. Uh, yeah, that space already occupied. Give me a two meter sealed shaft that way. Please. Oh crap, it's too close. It's because of the electrical motor. Okay, resources. Sorry, electrical engine. Here. Steam. Small crank. Now this is definitely just the first version of this sub. Uh, there will be a lot more to it. But for now, I just need to ensure that I have a couple of things. I need to have survivability. I need to have the capability to run away from things. And I need to make sure that I can control this thing. Those are the key things. I don't even, strictly speaking, need the capability to kill stuff. And I know that sounds ironic, because this is survival mode. But, hold on. What do you mean not connected to a steam engine? Oh. Uh, I know it's ironic, but I can survive off of the scraps of other craft, if need be. Let's see, that's the command section, which has a whole bunch of beams that I don't strictly need. I suppose these were two meter beams. They now need to be threes. Click, click. Done. Give me a seat here. Now I haven't enabled it yet, but at some point I will put a um, 3D mode on this thing. I'm not gonna use any controls, control modes or screens or stuff like that because for YouTube purposes, it's just not ideal. It's more interesting, at least from my perspective, to actually be able to look at stuff. All right, I can now house 11,000 materials. Now to quickly, very, very, very quickly throw together the bow, because we're already 14 minutes in and the baddies generally don't wait for my craft to finish, if there is such a thing. Uh, no, that one. Come on. Copy this one, paste that in. Yeah, this will have to do for now. I'm getting really worried that something's going to spawn right on top of me and murder me. Which would be an interesting but fairly sad way to uh, start and end an adventure series. 
off you go. Beams here, beams there. A couple of two meters to fill the holes. Give me a slope here. Hydrodynamics is going to be dreadful on this thing for now. But I only care about my survival at current. I can always come back to fix this once I actually have the capability to survive. Click, click, click. A couple of beams here. Whoops. And a beam there. Okay. Uh, this is a separate compartment. That means it'll also need its own air pump. Done. Now, a few things I'm going to need. The capability to not roll all over the place. So I'm going to add a couple of roller presets here. How these things work, I'll explain in a minute. I just need to put them on first. What these things will do is counteract any roll that the ship's going to have. And that means that I'm going to have a stable platform to work from. Which is more for uh, my potential motion sickness than anything else. I don't want to be rolling all over the place. So roll on the PID. It's going to set it to zero. It's going to counteract any roll that we might have. And you can already see these props very, very, very slowly turning. Okay, next, I'm going to need the capability to control hydrofoils. Because those are going to work on my pitch. No self-respecting submarine comes without hydrofoils. And this thing is no different. Except they usually don't refer to them as hydrofoils. They would refer to them as dive planes. If I have the lingo correct. So those are going to be controlling my pitch. Uh, off, if you're on the surface, they don't work very well. Because you're bobbing and weaving on the surface. Underwater, it becomes far easier. Because in a way, submarines fly underwater. Especially in from the depths, I suppose. Fire computer. Not that we have anything to fire at the moment. Uh, and... Where is my seat? There's my seat. Okay, that's a bit too close. I need a PID. Then I need my chair. And then I need the ship's wheel behind me. I need to sit in my chair. This thing is going to work with the altitude above me in sea level. And it's going to control air pumps. I can enable a fake set point, which means set my depth to that particular level. And that will ensure that the air pumps are going to get used to make my depth so much. So I'm going to say minus 10. And that should only keep the resource gatherer sticking above the water. There we go. We're already diving. How much is left here? 1700. I want that. Depth minus 9, minus 10. Very good. So start, minus 11. Can we go to minus 15 and still have the resource gatherer sticking above the water? Should be able. Okay, we're at minus 15. If we get engaged now, at least the damage won't be that severe. That's the, the plan anyway. So now we're gonna arm this turtle, because <laughs> that's basically what it is. It's a turtle. Uh, for now, Let's see if we can add torpedo tubes here, running along this side, like that. I might not be able to afford two of them early on, because these are really expensive units. All right. Uh, yes, turn mirror mode off. Whoops. I'm just going to add one torpedo launcher. Now, there is all sorts of stuff to be said for what size of torpedo you're going to use, uh, what sort of weapon you want to be, uh, or rather, what sort of weapon you want to have. There are all sorts of ways that you can go with this, and I'm not going to go through all of them in this vid. But over time, I will probably discuss several different ways that I found to be fairly effective when it comes to blowing shit up. Weapon system one. 
you are powered by a torpedo propeller, you are looking for stuff through a torpedo sonar. One set of fins is usually enough. Ballast tank, prediction guidance, one fuel tank is usually enough as well. So you're just going to be explosive warheads. Explosions underwater get a bonus, which is really nice. Uh, 10,000 high explosive power range. Let's see, 89 seconds of water thrust, but 40 seconds of lifetime. I'm going to set another regulator here, because I can never get rid of that. But with 80 seconds, let's say 90 seconds and 50 meters per second, I can hit targets four and a half kilometers out. That's pretty substantial. Thrust before locking on down to 50. I don't need any of that nonsense. I do really, really, really want an IFF here. I really, really, really do not want to get hit by my own torpedo. We have threats in the area. Stuff has spawned in. I just saw some red. No, nope, that's nothing. Where be the bad guys? Let me check. Where are you guys at? Here. Shuriken. Six and a half thousand materials. This one, a Telemachus for 27,000. Be nice if something could happen to that thing. How survivable is that? Oh, that's one of those moving fortresses, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. For that purpose, I think... A high explosive torpedo is not worth it. Uh, where's my torpedo launcher? Here. For that, I'm probably going to have to be a bit more electrified. We're going to go with a high explosive or with an EMP charge. Six and a half thousand. Not great. Not terrible. Weapon away. Target Shuriken. Range six and or sorry, three and a half thousand meters. Let's hope that this thing can inflict some damage and get me some more resources. Uh, speaking of resources, my sector is clear. So I can just remove this whole pole and I can start moving. But there is one more thing that I would very much like aboard my craft and that is the Hearthstone. So that thing has to get removed. It's gonna sit over there. All right, we're gonna start building up a little bit of speed. One thing I haven't built yet is a rudder. Maybe a worthwhile investment on a watercraft two like that and two like that depths minus 17 we are rolling quite a bit I think that those roll yeah those roll counters are a bit too happy okay I don't mind them being too happy but I'm gonna tune them down a little bit and for that, I'm going to go into the... Where are you at? Roll. Set the gain to 0 0.05. That way it's not going to respond as heavily. Yeah, we did 5.7 thousand in... Or 5.6 thousand in EMP damage. And we brain fried the AI of the Telemachus. There's now 4,000 materials there. And I think the Telemachus got the other guy because there's 1,200 there. Not a bad start. So let's head over there. I mean, so I'm going to have to head on a southeast course. Let's see how fast I can make this thing. Three meters per second, four. Drive speed to 100. Six meters per second. Look at this go. Full ahead flank. Depth is still minus 17. I'm going to go a bit deeper than that. I don't quite feel safe at this depth. So we're going to set that to minus uh, 75. Good luck trying to find me at minus 75 meters. Let's adjust the deck here. So I think that these are 4 meter beams. No, not quite. There. 
That's a four meter beam. Oh crap, I built it not quite as I'd hoped, but decent enough. Depth, minus 58. I'm not seeing any red on the scopes, so I think we're clear. There's nothing out here yet. Good. That means I can work on my nose a little because I really despise how that nose looks right now. That is hideous. Because we can do so much better than that. Get that thing off. Uh, these things again. I am expecting a lot of makeovers for this craft. There are so many things that are going to get changed throughout its lifetime. And that's fine. That's quite how I like the game. Your craft sort of evolves with you, if that makes sense. Uh, two meter slope there, slope here. This can just be a regular two meter beam. The only thing I still need to do <laughs> is put some teeth on it. And I don't mean torpedoes necessarily, although that would be nice, but like an actual drawing of teeth. Like a shark's beak coming at you. All right, slope. I think our hydrodynamics are marginally improved at this point. I'm doing four meters per second. She's going to get to where she needs to go, but she's not going to be fast doing it. That's for sure. Um, yeah, let's close this part off. Right, that's a little better. I also want to have that second torpedo launcher installed. Crap, we're heading the wrong way. I'm doing I'm going north. Right? Coming east. Coming south. That's better. Okay. Anything hostile out here? Doesn't look like it. Good. So now I should be coursing south, yeah. The thing is, I think I might be producing a lot more power here than this poor propeller can work with. Yeah. The prop cannot handle the amount of power that I'm throwing at it. So I'm going to upgrade to a different prop. Because the one that I have right now is this one. I can go to a 3 meter one, which can handle a lot more thrust. Uh, this should connect it. There we go. Speed 13 meters per second. Now, I might not be able to sustain this speed for... Well, actually, I can. For extended periods of time, I might be able to. This small crank motor, though, is giving it all she has, I think. If I put that to max... No, it's not too bad. We just need to make sure that the rudder gets installed again. Otherwise, it's not going to churn particularly well. If at all. Okay, depth, 77 meters. Drive, 10 meters per second. And battery is okay. We're using a tiny amount of steam to keep the batteries powered up. And yeah, this should be fine. Are we getting anywhere near those resources? Yeah, somewhat. But hey, there's another 5k there combined. I want that. And I'm going to get that off screen. 
and ensure that I have the resources to build the next part of the episode. And that's going to be the next episode. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you soon for the next part of this new submarine adventure series. Don't forget to subscribe so you're going to catch the next one. See you then.